Hello everybody, this is Pun Frugal Streamer and I have a micro review for you. Thanks to Five Iron. Five Iron has sent me the AmpliTank Tank 3 Dynamic Cardioid Microphone. This is a USB and XLR microphone. Uh, they've been making these dual microphones for a little bit now and it's nice that they're doing this. Now what they've done with this one that I really like about it is they have made this more of a broadcast professional kind of microphone. It doesn't have the same aesthetic as their previous like gamer microphones that sort of thing it lacks the the rgb it's a nice looking microphone very similar to kind of like the rode pod mic a broadcast style microphone that you could feel good having in front of your camera uh, this is an all metal build very well built uh, microphone that has pretty much everything all the controls that you would need right here on the microphone itself including mute headphone and mic gain controls if you're interested i want to go ahead and go through a review of this i've got a, some testing clips that i'm going to do i'm going to do some off axis rejection test i'm going to do some plosive tests and i'm going to do a comparison between xlr and the usb of this see what kind of differences there may be in the coloring of the uh sound quality if you're interested then stay tuned. Also, we'll do a video, and this will be a separate video, on tuning this microphone so that you can get the best audio from it using the free filters inside of OBS. So if you're interested in that, and you're going to need to subscribe to this channel, this type of content that I do, I teach you free and cheap, inexpensive ways to make your live stream look and sound better. So if you're interested, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So. Let's now go ahead and get into the review. All right, so here is the off-axis rejection of the Five Fine Tank 3. As I'm talking here, I'm at the, uh, directly in front of the microphone. Here I am at 90 degrees to its left. And here I am 90 degrees. No one, nobody's going to talk into it like that, right? <laughs> Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. All right, here is a plosive test with a windscreen. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. There is a few things that you can do to kind of help this microphone a little bit. Uh, now, this this also works for like my Rode Pod mic. Uh, by putting this windscreen on, which this is designed originally for the Rode Pod mic before Rode actually put out their own uh, pop filter windscreen. You could buy these. I think they're maybe. 15 bucks on Amazon. They may have even come down since then as more companies have made these. But this also fits really well on the Fi Find. Excuse the noise that I'm about to give you. But this works really well on the microphones too. And what you can see is that it may actually darken the vocal a little bit, which may, you know, give it a little bit more of a low end sound. Uh, by taking some of the presence out of it a little bit. I've noticed that that's what it does with my pod mic is it actually takes some of that uh, upper mid out and kind of gives it a little bit more of a broadcast kind of sound just by putting the pop filter on it. Uh, so that's something you need to consider. And also if you're, you know, you do struggle with plosives, this does a good job at helping with that too. So you can go this route and get one of these really cheap uh, on Amazon now to help with that. Uh, and if you find the one that works with the pod mic, just know that it fits well and is nice and tight on the Fi Fine uh, Tank 3. It will not shift around and feel loose. All right, so this is going to be a test of the overall sound of the Fi Fine Tank 3 in both USB and XLR. I currently have both connected. The only thing I've done, both are unprocessed. There is no filters going on, no effects. Only thing that I have done is I have gain matched the two microphones so they're the exact same level inside of OBS. Okay, no compression, no EQ, no noise suppression, no nothing. Uh, that is it. Currently, 
I am metering at about a minus 15 uh, max peak with about, I would say, about looking like about a minus 35. So I'm definitely going to have to boost this in post. And I will uh, provide that down below. Now, what I will do uh, is throughout this, uh, throughout this clip, you will see that I will, you know, switch these around. And uh, you will be hearing the USB versus XLR, and you can kind of listen to see some differences between the two as I do that. But here are the technical specs of the Fifine Tank 3. First of all, it is a dynamic uh, microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. It does provide USB type C on the mic end with a type A to the computer and also XLR. Uh, USB power consumption is 5 volts at plus or minus 0.5 or 5 plus or minus 0.25 volts current of 100 milliamps. And it is a microphone that goes up to 48 kilohertz sample rate at 16 bit bit depth. Frequency response, it is tuned has a frequency response of 50 to 16 kilohertz. Signal to noise ratio, they say, is greater than 80 dB with a max SPL of 120 dB. Uh, your sensitivity is minus 50 plus or minus dB volts. Uh, it does have a headphone monitoring jack. Impedance with that is greater than 16 ohms. Output power of 10 milliwatts. Frequency response of the headphone jack is 20 to 20 kilohertz with a signal to noise ratio of 95 dB. Now, the frequency graph which i'll provide on the screen uh, can give you an idea of how it is tuned again you can see the 3 db roll off that uh, you get this high pass that really comes in uh, strong at about 80 hertz and then there's a slight increase in presence boost really above 500 hertz all the way up until about three to four thousand hertz and then you start to see a, a slight uh, cut in the, around five kilohertz and then again again at 10 kilohertz and i guess that is to kind of combat uh sibilance and then you see the frequency roll off there at the high end so uh, this is a tuned microphone already with a pretty decent little presence boost there which is something that may or may not fit your vocal and something you really need to think about especially uh, for male vocals that are on a higher end of the register there you may find that this microphone may be a little harsh for you people like me that are on the lower end or kind of mid-range uh, maybe not but if you feel that your voice is already thin on a on a flat microphone this might even make it more so keep that in mind speaking of handling noise i am rubbing the microphone now and i'm moving my mic arm around so that you can hear things i'm also going to press the mute button to see if there's any noise it transmits through Okay, so there you have an idea of what the sound quality is like of the Fifine Tank 3 in both USB and XLR. All right, so overall, what do I think about this microphone? Well, uh, I think the microphone sounds really good, especially if you're going to use it in XLR when you have a little bit higher quality of a, of a, of a preamp. Uh, now, you know, my Rodecaster Duo who has really nice preamps. They're clean, they're transparent. And it does give this microphone a nice, nicer overall sound quality than the USB. The USB itself, I think, is is good. It's not great. Uh, is it worthy of a seventy nine dollar microphone? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it would work fine. You need to, you know, tune it a little bit. Uh, if you have a thinner vocal, I think that's something that you're going to really need to, you know, consider uh, because, you know. This microphone in USB mode is pretty thin sounding. Uh, so it may re 
be able to require some processing. Now I have a great microphone tuning tutorial that you can use for OBS uh, using the OBS filters and VST filters that you can download for free. The plugin filters that you can download for free and tune your microphone. I have a great video on that, a very popular one that people use and I will provide a link below for that if you want to learn how to actually tune the microphone like the Tank 3 using free options. And that's probably what you're going to need to do if you're starting in USB and you want to get this microphone up to snuff because like I said it's pretty thin sounding in USB. The headphone jacks, probably my biggest critique of this whole thing. Uh, the headphone jack is extremely bad. I would not even consider using it for a uh, an audio playback device. I'm just going to be honest with you. It lacks power. Uh, if you're using headphones, if you're using uh, in-ear monitors like these, uh, you know, both of these, just it can't push them. It just cannot push them. And you really have to turn audio all the way up to get a level of audio that you feel comfortable with. And then on top of that, it just doesn't sound good. I mean, it's, it, it's very uh, just muddy sounding. There's really, uh, the, there's no imaging. The imaging's terrible, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I mean, there it's a night and day difference between listening to the audio output of the Rodecaster from the headphone jack compared to the headphone jack output on the microphone. Just a night and day difference. I mean, it, it just literally is. And, I, and, and you just go, wow, that's, that's, that's not good. So if I find you've done a good job at, at getting your microphones to where they need to be, now we need to work on the headphone jacks and the headphone output because a lot of people probably want to consider using this as their main monitor for not only their vocal but also for their computer audio. Uh, especially if you're a gamer or you want to listen to music, you want to be able to enjoy it and, and get the full fidelity of it. And unfortunately, you're not getting that in this uh, headphone output. That's probably my biggest critique. I think the build quality itself is fantastic. I like the mute button. The mute button, button's nice. You know, everything is handy right here on the microphone itself. You can't beat that. And the fact that it is XLR and USB, it gives you the ability to buy this microphone. And then when you expand to an interface, uh, you can continue using this microphone. You don't have to put it back in the drawer because now you have to find an excellent microphone. And that's a really nice feature. And I'm glad a lot of companies are doing that nowadays. Uh, so another feature with this that I really like and it's something that is really nice is the fact that you can use this with your mobile device. I can plug this, I can get a USB-C to USB-C uh, cable and plug this directly into my Samsung and use the microphone and record videos right here on my phone, which is really nice to be able to do that. Likewise, being able to use USB and XLR at the same time gives you some flexibility. Say, for instance, if you're in a two PC setup, you don't really have a mixer for, per se, but you wanted to be able to have a microphone on both your stream PC and your game PC. Well, if you have an audio interface like a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, or you know a wave xlr or whatever uh, you can have this plugged up in xlr mode going to your stream pc and then you can plug the usb cable and send the usb to your game pc and now you have a microphone for two pcs you don't have to worry about any extra cabling to get your microphone to your game pc so that is a nice feature of these two and this one does work as i've got usb and XLR plugged in at the same time and you use them both simultaneously inside of OBS. So that just kind of gives you a proof of concept. So yeah, really nice that that is a, also a feature that you can uh, you know do this with. So do I can think that this is a decent microphone to buy for $79? I think it's on the verge of being a little too expensive for other microphones that are in this area that you can get. For instance, the Samsung Q2U, still in my opinion, is probably the best bang for your buck. It'll give you the exact same functionality. It may not look quite as good on camera because that's a, you know, it's it's an old school handheld style dynamic cardioid microphone. It's not a broadcast style microphone like this is. Uh, so if look is not a consideration for you and you don't mind, 
you know, the handheld style dynamic, dynamic microphone that you would typically see like on stage, for instance, then I would think the Samsung Q2U would be a better option for you because number one, it's gonna sound a lot better in USB mode. And you can do the same things with it here that this microphone can do. It has a better headphone output. Um, and you can do USB and XLR at the same time to multiple PCs. And it has an on off switch and a mute that actually works in both the XLR and the USB mode where this one only works in USB and not XLR. If you're you know, considering the aesthetic of this microphone and you want a broadcast style microphone with all these features, then sure, I mean, I think it's a pretty decent buy. I'm just really disappointed in the headphone output and I know that's gonna be a turnoff for a lot of people. I think this is a good deal uh, for most people, I do. Uh, but I know that if you're looking to use this headphone output, you're going to be really disappointed. But other than that, I appreciate you watching the video. If you got any questions about this microphone, I will do a guide on this microphone and, uh, and I'll, and I will tune this microphone to the way, to the way I think it should sound, uh, you know, and kind of give you an idea where I think it needs a little bit of an adjustment uh, in terms of EQing. And that way, you know, you can have it sound as good as you want it. And I'll use some free plugins and the free filters inside of OBS to do so. Uh, so if you're interested in that, and I, you need to subscribe to this channel and you need to click that bell so that you'll know when I go live, you'll get a notification. And also like this video, please. All the help is greatly appreciated. I appreciate y'all. I'm really, really close to 20,000 subscribers. And I think that uh, probably within the next month or two, I will be uh, at that 20,000 mark. And I do appreciate all your support if you're doing that. So if you're new to here, come on board. Hit that subscribe button. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you later.